Recently, I reacted to a video that Brady did with Myth Vision Podcast. I did not get his name right. I kept, I think I call him Me Vision. My you vision. Call him, yeah. So. My vision. Well, it's okay because he used a rather old photo of me in the thumbnail. <laughs> so I think we're even now, Derek. Uh, and this is a video they just put out today. It's called Rattling Ruslan. Oh, I see what they did there. A little, uh, little uh, iteration. Iteration. A little, yep. little iteration there. I see the, 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 the Derek the fanatic coat with the with the, t with the packaging. <laughs> with, the this video. <laughs> with the writing. With the writing. Ghost writing a thumbnail. All right. So um, I reacted to a conversation they had. I thought it was a reasonable response. I'm not going to play their video because I'm not going to respond to a two-hour video. Three main things. We'll just break my video down in three main things. Point number one, Fanatic wrote a whole book about literal six-day creationism and how he thinks it's non-scientific and congruent. And I said, I think it's bogus that he won't debate Dr. Michael Brown. Yeah. Dr. Michael Brown challenged him to a debate. People have made dozens of videos debunking his claims. He won't debate anybody as far as I know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. He'll only talk to uh lay christian people not not scholars who went and got their degree from nyu in the hebrew and and so 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 point one still stands derek and fanatic you guys still won't debate him they think he's too emotional yeah and so someone even said in the comments like dr michael brown's arguments fall apart with just a little bit of logical reasoning sweet sweet so sit down with him <laughs> sit down there with him go. so that if, if his arguments are so bad sit down with Dr. Michael Brown. Okay. So that's, that's point number one, which that, might, that point wasn't really acknowledged. Like it was just like, yeah, we don't want to sit with him because yeah. <laughs> okay. You're sounding dismissive right now. I'm sounding like dismissive. That. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> point number two, I said that comparing people of faith to drug addicts mm -hmm. was an L. Because they said Christians have emotional experiences in worship, if you were to do a brain scan, it would be similar to doing drugs. If yep. you've ever done drugs, you would know it's a very real, deep yep. experience. Yep. Different, though, yeah. than faith Yeah. in that you're actually putting a chemical in your body. Let's go downtown and uh, see the homeless crisis and ask if yeah. th that drug is the same as the drug that they're referring to as the hmm. one that impacts people's lives. <laughs> maybe, just maybe there's like a... There's something actually happening in the Jesus one yep. where you get the same feeling, but a lot of positive things but, but change. But like net positive changes to your life, <laughs> yes. not net negative where you do heroin and you become homeless. Yeah. Okay. So I, I said, I thought that was a very disingenuous comparison. I don't know how you say in one hand that we need to be empathetic and respectful and then compare us to drug addicts. Yeah. They didn't really address that. They just kind of doubled down on it and said, yeah, we are empathetic because we know what it's like to be a Christian. And it is like being a drug addict. For real, go watch the video. I did a point by point breakdown of the entire thing. Um, in the comment section? If, in if in the comment it. section, if you guys want to see my response to actual to the actual video point by point. Um, it's timestamp by timestamp by timestamp by timestamp, like every single thing about the video. Okay, because they talk about a bunch of other stuff. My last one was that I said, I don't think their arguments are compelling. I've heard all, if not most of them. Stuff like, look at these other stories of Jesus. It's a lot similar to the Jesus of the Bible. Da, uh, Mike Winger did a whole video debunking these claims of there being another Jesus in history. Okay, so I, we talked, we, we, like, I don't find the arguments compelling. And so the response was, Oh, it's cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. These are two opposing ideas. Therefore, all Christians have cognitive dissonance. No, what if certain Christians just heard all the arguments and just like, I don't find your arguments compelling. So I think they're weak arguments. I don't think these are good arguments. So their, their rebuttal to that was that you hear the strongest arguments and because you're so stuck in your ways, you're not actually hearing them. You're just dismissing them for bad responses mm -hmm. that other people have given in the future. They're mm -hmm. saying just because you've heard a response to it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that that response is valid enough. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're having cognitive dissonance. Yeah. I think that's a bad argument. Yeah. I think that's a bad <laughs> argument. Yeah. Because the the entire this entire thing isn't about what's reasonable because if we were sober about what's reasonable, you would come to the conclusion that we can't prove God exists as in the scientific like here's a video camera of proof. And you and you, you definitely can't disprove that God exists, mm -hmm. right? If you did, you we would need a video camera and a time machine to go yeah. and travel, and that people have great reasons for being Christians. That's you. You would have to leave it at that. 
here is my invitation to you, you guys. I would love for Derek to come on the channel. How about you and me sit down, uh, Derek, you and me can sit down together, and if Brady wants to join us, we could bring in Dr. Michael Brown. And, and you guys can come to California. I don't like doing these sorts of contentious conversations over remote stuff, okay? Every time I've done it, I've regretted doing it remotely. So let's sit down, let's get together in person. Derek, you're welcome anytime to come to California, and we could sit down, we could have a conversation. He said he doesn't want to debate. Cool, we could just have a friendly conversation. Mm -hmm. I would love to have a friendly conversation with you. You guys know I'm not a presuppositionalist. You know I'm not a fundamentalist. We could sit down, we could have a big boy conversation. I would love to sit down and, and involve Dr. Michael Brown, since you guys know our scholars and hold all these degrees. Let's do it. So he responded, what, what, was, what did his comments say at the he very says, bottom of the thread? I'm down to hop on. Please email me so we can set it up. I'm in Washington State, just north of you. Maybe we can actually make things better through actual talking rather than YouTube video wars. I love it. I love it. I agree, Derek. I agree. And maybe we can get to the bottom. Maybe we can get to the bottom of some of these disagreements. But I, I stand by everything I said. Comparing followers of Jesus to drug addicts? Yeah. That's an L, bro. That's an L. Right? Like, just because I disagree with the arguments, you, you think that I haven't thought through the arguments? So my uh, follow-up questions I think could be helpful. Okay. They were really hung up on your word lofty lofty theologically yes um yes because i would take more of a c.s lewis mere christianity approach okay i would take a look and and, and, this, and, th and this is why this matters and this is why when you, you some of you guys get triggered when i say i'm not a six seven day uh, young earth creationist yeah because i don't think it's an essential doctrine yeah so when i say someone's being lofty theologically what i'm saying is you need certainty to every question under the sun and I don't think that was ever promised to us on this side of eternity. Mm. I don't need to know if the world was created in a literal six days. Yeah. I don't need to know that. It could be old earth. It could be gap theory. It, it doesn't matter. Yep. So, th so, so, so that's what I mean by lofty theologically, because in an approach where there's a systematic approach to theology, you need an answer to every question. I don't need an answer to every question. I don't need to know how humans' free will works with God's providence. I don't need to know how, to, how that works yeah. in order for me to say, you know what, when I look at the arguments for Jesus and the resurrection, I am compelled to believe that that happened mm -hmm. and the New Testament is reliable. And if I could trust the New Testament, then I could trust what Jesus said about the Old Testament and the prophets. Moses was a literal person. Adam was a, real, was a literal person. Eve was a literal... And so that, that's my framework. I take a more classical apologetics framework, okay? So I don't need an answer to, I don't need to have a position. I don't, I don't, what does it matter what my eschatology is and how the world's gonna end? What does it matter what I think about how the world began? Or have you placed your faith in Jesus and in the forgiveness of your sins based on the evidence of the resurrection? That is what I'm, that, that is what I'm anchoring my, my view on. And I don't need all the peripheral things to all click and line up perfectly. That's, mm -hmm. the, and that's what I mean by like, you need a certainty, you need a certainty to have every answer. And then when you don't have that certainty, then everything falls apart. And I don't need that certainty. When you were saying certainty, or you, I guess you did use the word, like when one thing falls out, yes. when one thread comes apart, yeah. everything falls apart. And they're saying it was many, many threads. What yes. you're saying is that one thread isn't just one small argument. It's a thread that leads to the rest of them, that yes. leads to a, the rest of the arguments. Yep falling out, yep. which are because of certainty. Yes. Now, my other question for you is that they were they were claiming, or not even claiming, but their kind of misunderstanding was that you are more uh, a, a emotionalism, yeah, but, version which, of Christianity. Which, 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 which is crazy, like, because I could poke fun of how silly the argument is. I'm emotional? Yeah. Like, that, that doesn't make any sense. Like, guys, this is entertainment at the end of the day. Yeah. I know you want, uh, Derek, maybe your thing is like, I want to have some academic channel where I'm that's we're entertaining here. Are there's, you an there's freaking sound effects. Are you an like, apologist? <laughs> <laughs> like there's sound effects. Yeah. Like this is supposed to be entertaining. And, and no, I've never identified as an apologist. Mm -hmm. Apologetics is just something I'm interested in. The way I'm loosely interested in basketball. Yeah. Like I, I, I think there's a utility to it, but I, I wouldn't identify as an apologist. So what is the strong? What do you think is the strongest argument for someone to come to Christ when you are laying it out? Is it personal experience or is it something else? The strongest argument, I think, is the resurrection oh. packaged with Pascal's razor. Oh, wow. Okay. I, think, I, th I think it's that simple. The resurrection, that the resurrection happened, that history testifies to it, that a whole nation was split apart, packaged with Pascal's wager, mm -hmm. right? 
If I'm right, I gain eternity, have a great life on this side of eternity. If I'm wrong, I have a great life on this side of eternity, and I it nothing happens. Existing. We all yeah. end, end up in the same place. Pascal's rager, right? But if you're wrong, well, then you lived your life as you wanted to on this. You, you were your own God here, and then, but, but you stand to lose eternity, and not just lose eternity, but potentially face judgment of a holy God. Yeah. So I think those two things, to me, I think are more are reasonable conclusions on why I believe Jesus is who he says he is. Yeah. But you would go back to uh, the, the yes. evidence of the re yes. resurrection. So I gave you evidence of the resurrection packaged with a philosophical view. What is believing? Because that's another thing. Like, what do you mean by faith? Mm -hmm. When I say faith, I say, I mean confidence spectrum of trust. Mm. I don't mean certainty. I get certainty through placing my faith in Jesus. Yeah reasoning through Pascal's wager, that's just one philosophical view, placing my faith in Jesus, and then in hindsight, I have certainty because my life is substantially better mm -hmm. following Jesus. Living yeah. Jesus' way is substantially better, even in suffering and in hard times. Mm -hmm. So the certainty and the and the knowing comes in the hindsight's 2020. That's how I know, because hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Right? But the confidence spectrum of the initial faith and the trust is through the resurrection and just through logically reasoning amongst myself. Yep. I, I, I only know in hindsight of my experience, mm -hmm. but you can't say no. You can't use the word no uncertainty within the confines of personal experience. That's not how you do these sorts of the discussions, right? So this is giving them the, then the benefit of the doubt to say, we can't have a, a debate on facts based on personal experience. Yeah. But my, my the personal experience and the facts of my life testify to a Jesus that's very real and alive in, yeah. in every facet. But it, that's subjective. Yeah. You can't objectively prove that. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and I think I think there is something there too when it's like what like they would they would argue that you're so tied to an ideology mm -hmm. um that you could never you could never deny it, even mm -hmm. if even if you were given the right evidence. But I would also argue that they're so that you it's so comfortable to live for yourself mm -hmm. that you would never want to stop living for yourself even if even if it was proven to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like yeah. it's, so, it's, so, it's so, nice we, being your own God. Yeah. I could use the same exact argument on that. Well, I think another thing they brought me up that, that that always frustrates me when this gets brought up is I said, look at the world before Jesus and look at the world after Jesus. Look at the way Romans treated babies and elderly people before mm. Jesus, and then look at after after Jesus, and they said, "Well, what about slavery?" That was his, that was his pushback. And slavery, one, what was happening in the Old Testament was not chattel slavery. Yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. A, you're talking about bond servitude. That's not the same. Two, who who helped free the slaves? Yeah, who were the abolitionists? Yeah, they were all Christians. Yeah, they all believed in the Bible. They would say that Christianity is also what enslaved people. Yes. But obviously, we would all say it's not Christianity. It's just it's a, a perversion it's a, of Christianity. It's a hijacking of dogma. It's yeah. a perversion of Christianity. That's why they had the slave Bible. Oops. They had the, they 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 literally had a separate Bible that they would give to slaves that removed all of the Exodus story, remove all oh, the bondage oh, is bad. <laughs> this is a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's slave Bibles on display now. Wow. So you 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 have the Bible finally. You have the Bible finally getting out to people, and then you have slave masters teaching their slaves the Bible, but not the full Bible. Shouldn't that tell you that the Bible was not pro-slavery? Yeah. Like that, that, and that's a, now, that, now that's a fact. Like we're talking, now we want to talk about facts. That's a fact. There's a slave Bible out there that removes all the verses yep. that are overtly uh, anti-slavery. I don't know what to, I don't know what you do with that. What do you, what do you, I, what, what, are you what are we talking about? So you're conflating what the what the word even means in the Old Testament, and then you're 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 uh, uh, aligning it as if th this isn't what the thing that changed the course of slavery here. Who who were the abolitionists? They were Christians. Yeah. So my my my, and my point would be if someone if someone is on a deserted island, if someone's on a deserted island, and they get the scriptures, and it's translation they could understand, and they read through the entire Bible cover to cover. <laughs> Yeah. Say it takes them um, a month. They're going to be five point Calvinist slave owners. Then, <laughs> right? Is that, is that your conclusion? Like, yeah, is yeah. that really the conclusion? Yeah. Anyone that reads the Bible cover to cover and really just sits with it as it plainly reads, hard to make the argument they're going to walk away thinking slavery good. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's a preposterous point. Anyone who sits with the Bible, and, you, and you're definitely not going to walk away as a five-point Calvinist. And yeah. you're not going to walk away with needing to, 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 to know everything about everything. Yeah. And this is what I mean by mere Christianity. This is what I mean by a simple, humble Christianity where I don't need the answers to everything. You're also going to spend a, a decent amount of time just trying to survive on the island. You're going to spend You know some, what I'm saying? Sometimes some time, we're yeah. just too comfortable nowadays. Yeah. So yep. we, we want all the answers. Yep. It's like, you might need to be on an island. Yep. You, you need to go build some shelter. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month, where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast. Discord access that's private and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. I promise you, the perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.